We're talking about the general election, the midterms in Congress, and the fact that we have actually one of the hottest races, not just in New Jersey, but in the entire country, right here in our backyard. That's the battle of the Democrat, Tom Malinowski, to keep his job against Tom Kane Jr., son of our popular former governor, Tom Kane, the Republican challenger. Why is this district so interesting and contested? So in the redistricting uh, process that went through after the last census, the Democrats shored up incumbents in 12 out of the the 13 New Jersey districts. And the person who got really hurt by this was Tom Malinowski. Basically, they peel off some Democrats from his district and put in all the districts around it so that Mikey Sherrill's a little safer and Andy Kim's a little safer. And Malinowski's a lot less safe. He won by 1% last time against the same candidate on the Republican side, Tom Kane Jr. And if all we had was the redistricting, we'd say, well, if everyone voted the same way, he'd lose. So this is going to be a really tight race. Democrats know there is no margin of error if they want to keep control of the House. It's going to be a real uphill battle. They can't afford to lose this seat, but they're going to have real trouble with Tom Kane Jr. The only thing they're going to be able to do is try and say Tom Kane Jr. is too extreme for this district and try and argue that he is too Trumpy, he's too conservative, and really try and push Malinowski as a moderate. Problem is, Malinowski has had some problems of his own. He, there's an ethics complaint, you know, and he might be seen as moving a little far to the left. Let's go to Brendan, our Democratic strategist here. What are you whispering into Tom Malinowski's ear? I mean, right now, what, uh, <laughs> run hard, <laughs> uh, raise money, which he's doing both. Um, so, I, you know, so I think for the Congress, um, there's two things, or maybe three things, really, that right, he has to focus on. One, he does have to find those wedge issues uh, with Tom Kane Jr. And so far, historically, um, respectfully, Tom Kane Jr. has usually turned up to be an empty suit. Uh, he doesn't talk to the press. He rides pretty much on his family's uh, coattails. Uh, he's run for statewide office and other offices before and lost, largely because there's not a lot of there there. Um, the congressman, on the other hand, has been delivering now for his district. Yes, these are close races. Yes, this is swing district. Yes, the district has become harder, but he has raised a lot of money. He is galvanizing his own base around the issue of choice and reproductive health, which we haven't touched upon. These Supreme Court decisions are actually, ironically enough, a, a major plus uh, for the Democratic base and for the swing voter, uh, by and large women in that district, uh, who may have been migrating back uh, to the Republican Party. You then throw on the issue of guns, and then you throw on the issue of Tom Kane Jr. essentially having to try to walk this line uh, with the Trump base, which probably doesn't sell in the rest of the moderate portion of his district. So Congressman Malinowski is very much uh, still in this race. I would agree, based on the redistricting, though, this, this district has become harder uh, for, for the Democrat, the generic Democrat, uh, to win. Tom Kane has represented this district from the Assembly to the Senate for many years. He's a community vi volunteer in the fire department and the EMS. He almost won this district two years ago, very razor thin margins, when it was way less Republican. Now we're going into an environment that's very positive for Republicans when the issues are going to be inflation, the economy, gas prices, but Biden's failures, you know, all eyes are going to be on this race nationally. And oh, by the way, Tom Malinowski has major, major ethics issues profiting off of COVID-19. I think this is going to be a huge race. And it's really Tom Kane's race to lose. Let's just clarify the major, major ethics issues that have to do with some sale of stock that wasn't reported tied to pharmaceuticals, to which he's obviously he's rectified. Mark, you want to jump in on this? The idea that Malinowski, he's going to have some difficulties, not only because the district has changed, but because people are feeling the impact of inflation in their pocketbook. They feel gas price, you know, the difficulties of it going up increasingly when they go to the pump. But at the same time, this is going to become also, I think, a testament to what Trump's influence is on national politics. It is in many ways ironic because Kane Jr. comes from this long established family, you know, a family that, you know, descendants were fighting in the Revolutionary War that were moderate Republicans you know, the Kane family aligned with Christine Todd Whitman, that family. And for Kane Jr. to feel that this is the way he has to turn in terms to win tells you in a lot of ways what the direction the party is going, but it also says the direction of politics in our country is going. It's going to be interesting to see if the Trump imprimatur is actually going to be able to foil Malinowski and help Kane. Well